the brain will put together all kinds of stuff that then entered into it, and we will come up with a scenario in the form of a dream. And we have nightmares. We can see that's why you know the scriptures say that eyes never seen, ears never heard the things that God has planned for us in heaven. We can't imagine that which is in heaven because the only thing that we can imagine is the stuff that we've encountered. Our imagination can't go beyond that. Everything that we can imagine is a combination of something that we've encountered. Put together in a weird fashion, maybe, but nevertheless something that we are familiar with. No, no, no. They say that you're brainwashed if you want to eat like the Bible says you should eat. <laughs> Praise God, we need the fifth wash from our brains. Mm -hmm. I need to be brainwashed. Mm -hmm. God washes the filth of sin and unholiness out while the devil washes them in. Mm -hmm. It's a two-way cycle going on there. Who would you rather be washed by, God or Satan? That's the question. Mm -hmm. Both in the washing business. Mm -hmm. Both got their laundromats going on, folk. It's a matter of which one we want to be in charge of our lives. When God washes you, you want to do His will, no matter what it is. When the devil washes you, you rebel against God's will, no matter what it is. When you are washed by God, you don't care what people who are not washed by Him say to discourage you. Because Satan would definitely have somebody to try to discourage you. We had one friend in Florida. She uh, was a neighbor, as a matter of fact. And she was a Seventh-day Adventist, too. And she was living with her brother. And she wanted to become a vegetarian. He didn't want to become a vegetarian. He knew what that meant in the household, turmoil. So he would start teasing us, saying, oh, you want to be a little veggie head, huh? As if there's something wrong with being a veggie head. <laughs> My question is, who's got the perverted taste buds? Yeah. He's the one that had the perverted taste buds, not her. God didn't create him to eat the stuff he was eating. He created her to eat the stuff that she was eating. Mm -hmm. he created him to eat the same stuff too. Vegetation, fruits, nuts, grains, and vegetables. It's what we were created to eat. To eat. Mm -hmm. When God washes your brain, he gives you a determination, a burning desire to do his will and to see others saved. Those who are washed by the devil look for excuses to make their will appear to be God's will. Mm -hmm. Hmm? I don't know about you, but I want my brain washed by God. He uses the detergent of Jesus' blood to remove every stain and uh, that I will allow him to take away. Did you get that part? He will remove the stain that I will allow him to take away. Because we have to give God permission, folk. He, he don't just come and clean you up. No, no, you have to give him permission to clean you up. And when, he has, when he's doing his work of purging and cleaning, we can't be mumbling and grumbling about him cleaning us. Mm -hmm. We need to be happy that he is clean, especially when we can see from where we were and where we need to go. And look way down and see how far we need to, to go to get there. We should welcome the purging, although it may be uncomfortable at certain times. Sometimes it's all right stuff we don't like, but it's necessary. Right. Or God wouldn't do it. Let us give all, give it, give it all to him who is able to clean us up and to keep us clean. Mark 7, 21 to 23 says this, For from within, out of the heart of men, proceed evil thoughts, adulteries, fornications, murders, thefts, covetousness, wickedness, deceit, lasciviousness, an evil eye, blasphemy, pride, foolishness, all these evil things come from within and defile the man. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the heart again, folks. We're talking about the mind. We're talking about the brain. Do we need to be brainwashed or not? Mm -hmm. Proverbs 16.1 says, The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. Commit thy works unto the Lord, and thy thoughts shall be established. So we need to turn it over to God. Let him work with us. He knows how to fix us. We're broken. Just a little. It's a shame that so many of us don't know that we're broken. We, some of us don't think that we're broken. Some of us don't want to be told that we're broken. But folk, can I say it this way? You broke. <laughs> and so am I. We're all broke up. Now let me back to you, better than Anderson. Excuse me. We're all broken up. We're all broken up. Matthew 12, 34 says this. O generation of vipers, 
How can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Mm-hmm. Out of the abundance of what? The brain? Yeah. The mouth speaketh. Mm-hmm. That brain needs to be washed. Mm-hmm. A good man, out of the good treasure of the heart or brain, bringeth forth good things. And an evil man, out of the evil treasures, bringeth forth evil things. Mm-hmm. But I say unto you, that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. Mm-hmm. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Mm-hmm. Now that is deep. Mm-hmm. That is deep. By our words, folk. That's why I ask the Lord to take away some of the foolishness that comes out of my mouth. Mm-hmm. If anybody can think of some stupid stuff, I can <coughs> Some foolishness. See, I've asked him to take that away from me. And the thing about it is that uh, I don't mean that there's no humor in this life. No, no, no. God expects us to, to laugh. Yeah, but what are we laughing at? Mm-hmm. Right? That's right? So I think God expects us to have a good time. Like some of them used to break all the commandments. I don't mean to that extent. I can't see Jesus being stone faced all the time and never smile or laugh, although he was a man of many sorrows. Mm-hmm. Laughter works like a medicine, That's right. it really does. It really is a medicine. Matter of fact, there's some chemical things going on when you laugh, and you know it not, and some enzymes are being created that's good for you when you laugh. But the question is, what are you laughing at? Is it pure foolishness? Uh, th- there's a lot of humor we can find in life, you know that? Mm-hmm. There's a lot of humor we can find just in life itself. Looking at some of the animals, we can find humor too. Some of them really are funny have you cracking up. Mm-hmm. If you got a dog or a cat or a bird even, they do little funny things sometimes to have you laughing. Mm-hmm. Romans 2.28 says this, For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly, Mm -hmm. neither is that circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly, Mm -hmm. and circumcision that is of the heart Mm -hmm. or the brain, in the spirit, and not in the letter whose praise is not of men but of God. So, what we're told is that the Jew is inward, not outward. Mm-hmm. I don't have to be born in the family of Abraham to be a Jew anymore. I can be a spiritual Jew. Mm-hmm. That's right. That's what we've been told. Hebrews 4, 4 through 16. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 4 through 16. This is what the book of Hebrews chapter 4, verses 4 through 16 says. For he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise. And God did rest the seventh day from all his works. And in this place again, if they shall enter into my rest, seeing therefore it remaineth that some must enter therein, and they to whom it was first preached entered not in because of what? Unbelief. Unbelief. Again he limited a certain day, saying in David, Today, after so long a time, as it is said today, if ye will hear my voice, harden not your hearts, the heart of your brain. Harden not your heart. In other words, don't, get, don't be so stubborn when you hear me speaking to you is what God is saying. When I speak to you, don't get so stubborn that you don't want to hear it because I'm speaking for your good. I'll never tell you anything that's going to hurt you. I'll always tell you only that that's going to do you some good if you will let it. See, again, I'm, I'm, I'm stressing the fact that we got to get permission. Don't take for granted, folk. Don't take for granted that everything is okay, because it ain't. You need to talk with the Lord. Give Him permission. Tell Him about some of your problems that, yes, He already knows about, but sometimes He just wants to hear it from you. Mm-hmm. Sometimes we say, Lord, forgive me for my sins, and God is saying, which ones? Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. Continuing, verse 8 says, For if Jesus had given them rest, then He would not afterward have spoken of another day. There, there remaineth therefore a, a, a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own works, as, did, as God did from his. Mm-hmm. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest, lest any man fall after the same example of unbelief. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart or the body.